China's largest solid propellant rocket has failed its maiden launch flight. Yes, these are the breaking updates coming in on the broadcast. Rishabh Gulati, managing editor, joining us for the very latest. Uh, Rishabh, uh, what's the latest you can share with us? Yes, uh, this is a huge blow to the Chinese space agency. Uh, this was a much delayed launch that had to take place, uh, uh, which has now been called off. It's been aborted. Uh, this is the Kwaizhou 11 carrier rocket. This was supposed to be the Chinese space agency's largest ever solid propellant rocket. The launch was taking place at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. It was scheduled to take place at 12.17 p.m. Beijing time. But the Chinese press is now reporting that due to a technical malfunction, the launch has been reported. What that technical malfunction is and was, uh, they are saying this is being investigated, but it's not being released. Uh, this is a huge blow, of course, because uh, this rocket launch has already been long delayed. Several times the launch has been scheduled and it has been called off. The Chinese are, of course, able to hit orbit. Just uh, a few days ago, they managed to put in a couple of geostationary satellites into orbit. But the inability for them to figure out this rocket uh, is sending a message uh, not only uh, that we must examine of the claims that the Chinese keep on making about their technological prowess and their, of course, ability to convert uh, this rocket technology into intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, which we know that the Chinese are also aggressively working on to expand. Just a few days ago, they were threatening the American aircraft carrier groups uh, with uh, the ability, they said, of having anti-ship missiles in place that are capable of taking out aircraft carriers. So it is an embarrassment for the Chinese space agency. The timing of the embarrassment couldn't have been worse. But uh, they have chosen to abort the launch rather than, uh, you know, see the rocket blow up uh, in the skies, which, of course, would have been an even bigger humiliation over there. Well, absolutely, Arisha. But, uh, you know, in the face of, of course, several countries uh, scaling up their space programs over the last uh, year or two, including, of course, India, including, of course, the U.S., uh, this is a big blow for China's space streams and China's uh, space agency's prowess. Yes, well, for, for the fundamental logic that this uh, Kwaizhou 11, uh, which is uh, Kwaizhou translates into quick reaction orbital launch vehicles, uh, the earlier parts of this uh, 1 and 1A one have been have been uh, operating since 2013. Uh, this was a launch of the largest model. This was supposed to be able to carry a 1.5 ton uh, satellite into orbit, a 1.5 ton payload, uh, and was supposed to be a heavy lift model for the Chinese. Now, they have been manufacturing this within China, the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, CASIC, has been manufacturing this uh, uh, through its subsidiary called X-Space. Uh, they've been developing this rocket for many, many years, but uh, it clearly shows that uh, despite the launches that took place uh, of the earlier variants, the heavy lift variant, which is capable of this 1.5 ton uh, payload, isn't working. Now, remember, this is coming just a few weeks after we saw NASA collaborating with SpaceX to do a, a pretty historic rocket launch and connect with the International Space Station. So now it remains to be seen whether the Chinese, for all the ability that they are claiming, uh, can it really expand into the heavy lift, uh, heavy lift category. Right now, they are in a position to put a 200 kg payload uh, into, into synchronous orbits. Uh, but uh, when a heavy lift cap 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 capacity of putting 1.5 tons uh, into, into orbit has uh, come their way, They've had uh, another delayed launch which has been called off. So another scheduled launch of this rocket uh, has not been possible. The next, of course, thing for the Chinese is uh, to figure out whether they can be competitive. Remember, uh, currently ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, offers the cheapest, most inexpensive cost per kilogram in orbit. They are only being beaten currently by SpaceX and other private firms in the U.S., so India's uh, ISRO is uh, more cost competitive in not just the implication of the military domain or the space domain, but the commercial domain. A lot of uh, the satellites, in fact, most of the satellites that are put into orbit these days are not put out by governments. They are put out by private companies who are looking, uh, of course, uh, to have satellite launches. Uh, as we speak, uh, Elon Musk and SpaceX are trying to put in thousands of satellites into orbit uh, to offer 
a, a global internet system uh, that will be satellite based so it was important for the chinese to uh, show that they had a capacity to do heavy lift and the heavy lift is not just one payload or one satellite of 1.5 tons but maybe dozens of satellites uh, in one launch remember about a year and a half ago uh, isro set a global record by putting 100 micro satellites in orbit uh, from a single space launch so the inability of the chinese to get this solid propellant rocket sorted out is going to be a huge blow to them uh, and uh, not only a, a blow in terms of their space program a blow in terms of their military program but also into their commercial program absolutely and i perceive wise it was also rich very damaging for the chinese uh, given that it is similar type of technology which they will be using in their uh, ultra ballistic rockets and of course also to ramp up their defense capability at a time when they have been uh, showing a lot of belligerence and a lot of aggressive uh, you know and a very aggressive stance in their uh, defense posturing you know vis-a-vis of course india vis-a-vis um, you know vietnam taiwan and others in the south china sea uh, and also you know getting into a sort of a, a potential confrontation going ahead with the us as well so in terms of perception as well this perhaps is the last uh, uh, last thing the chinese would have wanted at this particular juncture so they uh the entire world we in india the americans the chinese the japanese the aussies all of us know that the real confrontation is not going to happen in the military domain the military posturing the military exercises are all important uh, we of course here in india have to defend defend our sovereignty in ladakh the real issue and the real race is about next generation technology it's about the ability of the chinese to roll out 5g and grab the data from the world the next frontier is obviously space it's about the ability to put out uh, satellites at the cheapest cost compete for a global space market uh, which could be anywhere between 4 to 700 billion dollars over the next 10 years this is what the real game is about now the chinese uh, uh, the quasar 11 rocket this was uh, not only uh, designed to have a payload about 6 times 7 times a uh, larger heavier than their previous competitor twice as large in size so they were banking a lot on getting this rocket sorted out they're still banking a lot on getting this rocket sorted out because in the end the ability to control the new space race is about a commercial ability the chinese want to be able to put up their rockets with the cheapest payloads uh, their satellites with the cheapest payloads not only for their own domestic sector but to be able to compete in a global environment right now as i've already mentioned if you look at uh, national space agencies isro is the most competitive and most reliable globally after this is coming spacex in terms of uh, affordability uh, of uh, per, uh, per dollars per pil- per, per kilogram uh, payload cost uh, then of course you have uh, amazon as the founder e, uh, jeff bezos coming in uh, with his own uh, space rocket launch there are several other smaller companies in the united states and we are hoping to develop these smaller companies even here within india uh, that in a few years could have the capacity to be building their own private ro- rockets in partnership with isro so the domination has to be for the chinese they want to dominate data they want to dominate high tech they want to dominate uh, ai uh, uh, biotech and genetics and space now remember this is also coming in the context of a donald trump a couple of years ago uh in, insisting that the united states set up a space force because the next domain of competition is going to be for uh, space resources uh is going to be about what kind of bases are set up on the moon what is the target uh, in mars for all you know we don't want the chinese to be disregarding uh, space treaties and laying stake uh, to various claims uh, uh, you know uh, in in space uh, including uh, the amount of satellites after a point that can be put into orbit are limited because of space debris so it's not an unlimited field that we are dealing with and the chinese have wanted to get off the guns and this is going to be a huge failure for them all right uh, rishab stay with us in fact we have wing commander prapul bakshi defense analyst also joining us at this point on the broadcast wing commander bakshi your first reaction to this news coming in that china's largest solid propellant rocket has failed it's uh, made a launch flight yes there is a uh... no doubt about it that china is going to face a little setback on this uh, or rather a large setback on this because china has made a lot of headway in the space technology 
not only the space mission origin the satellite and anti satellite top technology now we are talking in terms of commercial activities and all the commercial companies launching their satellites uh, agreed they want to win that race but just be rest assured this is a commercial race in space but there is a military race in space also going on and chinese are very very uh, adept at that and uh, we have to be very sure that this rocket which has failed in what category was it uh, announcing it it was a commercial is a different thing what it was actually and what data it was going to collect is a different thing and as you know chinese have already mastered the uh, i mean nearly mastered i'd say don't say fully uh, 80% or 70% in anti um, satellite operation and anti missile intercepting a missile and anti satellite operation that also they are coming at par with america so on this issue is also a worry to a lot of people and they will now marry this technology with the laser technology and cyber technology which they are already ahead so this comp- compounding of space and it and cyber is going to be a very lethal system which china is being bringing it up so we have to watch out about it and we have to oh, as to what china the chinese are going to do next because very soon we will have to face the military might in the space of Though of course we have also created air and space force, but question is Chinese are ahead of us in this game. But but does this also show, you know, Wing Commander Bakshi, that that uh, perhaps they they are a bit more hype than substance. Perhaps they are a bit more talk about technical prowess than actual know-how. Uh, you know, uh, with 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 this failure, you know, uh, glaringly evident of the actual reality of their space program. Yes, uh, there 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 are. Uh, you know efforts that are being made of course to ramp it up uh, but in terms of uh, you know the kind of perception that they built up obviously this failure today of of not a very complex rocket i mean uh, you know shows that perhaps there's more to a little substance uh, well there is more to it what we say i can understand they have they can hype up their programs also they they built a lot on positive uh, for uh, you know public relation and you know projection of image that they are doing but they there is no doubt about it that their space technology is not to be trifled with they have got they gained a come a lot of mileage in this game so as far as india is concerned we have to watch out for this yes uh, other countries are looking very closely especially russia and america america especially is going going to watch very uh, closely and lot of technology to which is taken from russia even russia is not very happy about it how they are using it so this also is has we have to be very sure as to where, where china lands itself in but they are quite ahead in this game and you know very well that this failure will not deter them to make further attempt very fast for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon